Morning, <clears throat> morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, in this mass, we are going to ask one fellow student called Nakai Maachi to help us with reading, singing, and responses. And I'll ask um, if um, Mr. Chidawenzi can help us if we are um, now streaming so that we can begin mass. Yes, Father, we are now live, we can begin. Okay. Is Nakai there? Is Nakai available? It seems like she's not yet here. I'm trying to communicate with her. Uh, she joined in now. I'm sure she has. Um, I don't see her, Father. I don't see her yet. She's joining now. Okay. I think she's in the waiting room. Uh, nobody here yet. Okay. She's saying waiting for admittance. Let me let me try to send the, uh, the link. Maybe she's using a, a wrong link. I've uh, I've given it. Gave me. Okay. Okay.
大ちゃん。Father, I'm just trying to assist you to connect. Can you just give us one minute? That's fine, no problem. Father, you are now the host, so maybe you need to admit people from your end. Oh, I see. Morning. Morning, Father Reiki. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So much. Um, so we are about to begin our mass, and um, we we'll just start with um, we we can start briefly with the opening song. Mari uyai mari. Mari uyai, Mari uyai, Mari uyai, Kuzoti basira, 
In our mass, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We are gathered here so that we may be able to love and serve the Lord. May this Holy Mass help us to know that the Lord is always watching over us. For us to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father just to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty Lord have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord, happiness in our days. Make here your children love and serve you, and may they know that you are a God who listens to them. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we hear our first reading? The first reading from the book of Baruch. Take courage, my people, O memorial of Israel. It was not for destruction that you were sold to the nations but you were handed over to your enemies because you angered God. You provoked him who made you by sacrificing to demons and not to God. You forgot the everlasting God who brought you up and you grieved Jerusalem who reared you. For she saw the wrath that came upon you from God and she said, listen, you neighbors of Zion. God has brought great sorrow upon me, for I have seen the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy I nurtured them, but I sent them away with weeping and sorrow. Let no one rejoice over me, a widow and bereaved of many. I was left desolate because of the sins of my children because they turned away from the law of God. Take courage, my children, and cry to God, for you will be remembered by him who brought this upon you. For just as you planned to go astray from God, return with tenfold zeal to seek him. For he who brought these calamities upon you will bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. The word of the Lord. Thank Thank you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to trade upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power 
of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and he said, I thank you, Lord, Father of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by your Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal them. Then turning to the disciples, he said private, Blessed are the eyes which see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, and did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we come to love and serve the Lord in everything that we do. We give him everything that we want. We, we belong to him. May this retreat that we are doing today help us to be mentally strong, to be socially strong, to be spiritually strong, and also to allow the Lord to speak to us, to come into our lives. Let's continue to pray for each and every individual, but most important, let's pray for thyself, that I'll be able to overcome the challenges, the habits that hinder my progress. We can sing the offertory song. Take our bread, we ask you take our hearts, we love you take our hearts, oh Father we are yours, we are yours, yours as we stand at the table you set, yours as we eat the bread our hearts, can't forget we are the signs of your life with us yet we are yours we are yours take our bread we ask you take our hearts we love you take our lives oh father we are yours we are yours. Pray, my brother, that my sacrifice may be acceptable to the Lord Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept this oblation, O Lord, and help us to always offer to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Father most holy. You have given us your life. You have poured yourself to us. Help us always to rejoice with you. Together with the angels and saints as we say. Holy. holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your spirit upon them like the Jewful that they may become for us the body and blood who followed Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. 
Then he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of our salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your checks for the world. the world. fullness of church. Together with Francesco, prepare to our Archbishop and all the consecrated. Remember, O Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And the Savior's command, and also declared by the love of the church, willed by humanity, we dare to say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every form of evil. Preciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and you in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Onewe ne mwari, one ya ubisa matazo apasi, jawa kaku kwa mabi kwa wanyana. Mambo andi kuziri kutimpinde mneni, chingo taura izwichete mwe wangu no poneswa. May the blood and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Hey brothers and sisters, as I'm receiving communion, please pray the prayer before we receive communion and ask the Lord to always be with you. Mangwanani, Mangwanani, Namaneru, Mangwanani, Namaneru, Diewu ke Yesu, Moyo wa Yesu, Diewu ke. Kwa ziwa imoyo wa Yesu, diye uke Yesu. Moyo wa Yesu, diye uke. Kwa 
our strength. Grant, Almighty Lord, joy and happiness in our lives. Help us that what we have received may always continue to flourish in our lives. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. I heartily want to thank Ms. Nakaim, Mr. Chidara NZ, and also the school admin and the platform, then Mr. Tinashe Mchenji, for affording us this opportunity to have online mass at all. All of you who are logged in right now, as soon as we finish mass, we will begin our uh, first talk on depression. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Receive the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass has come to an end. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Good morning once again, everyone. I'm now waiting for the rights to become a co-host so that we can begin. Thank you so much. Please repeat what you had said. You are now host father. I uh, thank you. So very soon I will uh, begin to share the screen. Here we are. I, I'm sure you can all hear me and you can all see the screen. Yes, yes we can. Father. Thank you very much. So we are going to start with our talk, depression, persistent feeling, sadness, anxiety, and or emptiness. And today is our date that we're going to share how we are going to navigate and talk about depression. What I'm going to say does not attack anyone at any given time, we are discussing uh, our objective facts, scientific facts. And at the end of this talk, one is supposed to reflect and say, how can I help the other? Or how can I be assisted and helped as well? We're gonna talk about depression. That's what we want to talk about. Have you ever had any moments and uh, times in your life where you are so depressed you're not so sure what's going on, how it has come to you, how it has affected you, how you can come out of it. And sometimes when you speak about depression, which is a um, psychological challenge, and it is something that really do we say it. And when we speak about depression, we don't exactly talk much about it. We speak about it as a verb. I'm depressed. And then that is it. We forget to speak about it as a condition. It is not a, a, a status that we find ourselves in, but it is a persistent condition that needs medical attention. In times like these, there's an image showing us moments when we are so depressed in our lives, when we don't know what is going on, when we just want to be in that space and don't wish to be anywhere else other than uh, what that image is depicting. You're coming from school, you're waiting for a parent, or you just find yourself seated, not knowing what to do. Because these are the things that come in your mind, come in your heart, come in your soul. Don't know what to do, don't know who to call, don't know what to say. You don't want people to approach you, neither do you want to approach them. So this is the space that we find ourselves. But how do we end up in, in the space which is called uh, depression? So we have these and many other symptom, symptoms that we will see. Feelings of worthlessness or hopelessness. We're talking, starting from top, uh, top left going, going further. Um, those feelings, how do I feel a human? I feel unworthy, I feel hopeless. I don't feel human. I feel so, 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 so nothing. That's how you feel. And then you lose interest in things that you once enjoyed. It could be a series, it could be reading books, it could be a pet, it could be going to the gym, it could be taking an early morning walk. Yeah, It'll be a very good habit that you now no longer find interesting at all. And you find so much withdrawal from friends and family. You put that do not disturb um, marker on your door. You don't want anyone to enter. You want your space. You always crying, teary all the times. Not because there's a, 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 a situation that is, or a stimulant that has caused you to be crying, but you just find yourself, you know, crying over things that happen. Sometimes there are two things that can happen, inability to sleep or you sleep so much. And we just, you know, we take it for granted. And we forget that there's something going on. 
you lose your appetite or increase appetite. This thing, two things are gonna happen. He's, you're hungry, I'm not feeling like eating. And then we take it for granted and say, we sweep it under the carpet. But we forget that this condition is one that is not supposed to be there with us. It's supposed to go, but we keep it, we maintain it, and we don't know what to do with it. This could be me. This could be you. You withdraw from friends, as I stated earlier. And when you're in school, maybe you used to sit during break time when there are 10 of you or 12 of you. And now you don't even want to see anyone. These are realities. You talk about suicide. No, we often say that, ah, and take my life. What's there to live for? These loose suicide statements, they are showing us a pocket that we need to run and hide in. Cry, we have spoken about it. When the appropriate word is changes in appetite. If you used to eat so much, you don't eat much. If you used to eat less, you want to eat so much. You don't like your, your movie series. No longer one interested in watching Rivers, Suits. No longer interested in watching Money Ace. No longer in reading the novels that you desire. This also happened, it's, these things happen to depressed people and these people are depressed are not anyone other than our form one students, our form two students who feel helplessness, worthless as we say. They just have this feeling and sense of guilt. Our form two students. Our form two students are always angry. The form fours don't want to talk to anyone. They can't concentrate either. I'm, I'm not speaking as a block. I'm speaking for one individual. Thoughts of death that we have heard and discussed about it. They even, we even write it in our, now I'll speak as if I'm, part of you. We even write it in our journals, write it in our books, write in our diaries, write it as we, in our, our WhatsApp groups and, and, and even on our statuses, placing images of death. If I used to love pizza, now I no longer like pizza anymore. If I used to have a great interest in KFC now, I don't even want to see it. nothing. You're just feeling so weak, no energy whatsoever. Let's talk about sleeping habits, also alcohol, alcohol abuse, which we'll see later on. And there's something that's called anhedonia, which is an inability to feel pleasure in normal pleasurable acts. When they come home, let's celebrate. Your brother and sisters bought a car, bought a house, done something phenomenal. Just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've got a negative, let me call it, low self-esteem. You're not good in maths, you're not good in English, you're not good in content, you're not good in geography, you're not good in sport or any other sport. Oops. Ineffectiveness. You feel ineffective. Um. You feel like you cannot do anything. There are interpersonal deep problems. And you're just moody. I'm not attacking anyone. If you find yourselves in any of these persistent symptoms, it raises an alarm and we need to attend to it. Don't be frightened, don't run away. We need to attend to it. I want you to read on those words and we, we go through them together.
never feel safe. Exhausted from pretending to be, this is a statement, I'm okay. And right in the report, you are not okay. So we sleep a lot. It's a strategy to block out suicidal thoughts and keep them leaving to fight another day. Well, I know that you're occupied from as early as maybe 5.30 to maybe 4 p.m. But even when you go home, you can see an abnormal sleeping pattern. You're depressed. And you tell yourself that being asleep is better than being alive. Even on, during holidays, you sleep from the time you sleep, you sleep throughout the whole morning. They knock on your door, wake up, you say, I'm, I'm up. You're just in your bed. You wake up around 12 every day. I'm not saying that the time that you work, time that you study, time that you get tired. Once a week, I used to, for me, Thursday was my sleeping day. I, when I was a student and if it was in university, Thursday was my knockout day. That I knew I had one. One day in a week. And I had breaks, study, study, sleep a bit, wake up. It was not a problem. But there's this abnormal sleeping pattern. And I'm sure if it rings a bell, you know what I'm talking about. So adjustment to disorder with a depressed mood. That's a type of depression. The stemia is almost another type. Then we've got major depression. And then this one, bipolar. Sometimes I'm happy. Within a fraction of a second or a minute, I'm completely sad. Totally different. It affects me. It affects the people that I stay with. We'll see what can we do. We'll see about that a bit later. And I'm sure the symptoms, we've seen them. But even here, sometimes we have bad Headache. I'm just vomiting all the time. The, the, diet, the diet part is because we feel blooded all the times. And sometimes we are ever sickly. It issues out in that way. Can't sleep well. High blood pressure. And now there's a very good way of how We'll see much on this in the next talk, but we are in a time and a space and a moment where we are having relationships. Heartbreak can cause depression. He has left you, he is gone. Who will I be with? Who will I talk to? Who will I call in the morning, up in the morning, up during the day, up at night? And he just told me that it's over. He needs his space. I need my space. It's painful. And most of us, I believe that we should have relationships, talks at school, at home, so that they help us mature and prepare us for such eventualities like these ones. Drug abuse, that's also a challenge. A pocket where we find ourselves, we cannot exit out of it. We've become addicted to it. And this can cause great depression. I visited my cousins during the holidays. We hit one or two blunts, now I'm now addicted to the blunts. And this causes the problem. Can't find them, I'm depressed because I'm hooked onto it. We go for some chills. But at the place we binge beer and smoke. I'll see about that a bit later. But I'm just showing you what causes depression. Problems at home that started when you were young. Family issue, shouting, talking, violence at home, of course, depression. Parental, physical abuse, emotional abuse. 
Perhaps it's dad who's always shouting at you, at mom, at your brother, at your sister. Or it's the verse, mom is also doing the very same thing. And perhaps it started when you were young, and now maybe five, ten years later, it hits you, it affects you. But their arguments, they're not healthy arguments. People are meant to argue. I mean, Jesus said that. You can discuss, you can argue, but don't let the son say, whilst you argue, you were saying that, do it for a period. But this is the norm. It caused depression. Even when we say, ha, huh, that's it, Jared. Ha, huh, I'm used to it. Ha, huh, that's home. But that's not human. And so if it's not, it's not anything that is desirably good, it therefore affects the soul. How do I relate with my mom? That's because we are letting it go to school. So I wanted to put this image because 95 and 99% of the girls have a close bond with their mothers, it also being a girl's school. I'm not negating the fathers, but that ruptured relationship with my mother, we don't talk, we don't vibe, she doesn't understand me. She's not my generation, she, she treats me like an infant. That can cause depression. I say that everything that I say, I've attended it now. But as a knock, she just enters in my room and starts shouting and talking and talking and talking. If even when it's my space, my room, I don't feel like it's mine because of the unnecessary invasions that my mom does in my room. She colonizes my space. She's a colonialist. And we don't have a healthy, good relationship. In fact, my mom is my worst enemy. I try to explain to her, she doesn't understand me. Even when I look at the letter she's holding, even when I've passed, even when I've come home with good grades, she still, she doesn't understand me. These people are monsters. So, this, which is supposed to be a healthy, positive, good relationship. And I'm sure parents that are listening are able to understand that we too can become sources of our children's depression. But because we come from an African society, we think that, ah, it's just, it's just, it's just, I'm sure you've heard those words. You've heard those words. You've heard those words. So we need to be mindful of what we say. And when we say these words, because they bellow so loud, so, so loud, the need for us to pay attention to pockets of depression. You feel so, so alone in your home, in your house. You feel so, so in need of someone. And because of that, we then compensated the drugs, sexual immorality, with alcohol. And when we do it, we don't do it in a, how a normal person does it. We abuse. I was watching a series called All America of um, American football athlete. And there was a girl whose dad was um, a, a, a music producer in everything, a mansion, so to speak, a big house. The girl was a loner and it issued out, a mental health it issued out. She needed treatment and help. The father was always in Japan, all over the world. The, the, the mother, father separated, so she was the only child the father had. Left a big, huge house. They were filthy. So you know, we can have so many things, but our souls can be so alone. Bob Marley once said that. 
the most poorest persons are found amongst the richest communities. They have material things, but they don't have the social things, he said. But when you go to the ghetto, they have nothing. They even share shoes when they're going out on dates and functions. But boy, oh boy, they are extremely rich, filthy rich when it comes to the social joys and morality. You know, one thing that can also cause depression is your siblings, these two are sisters. And the sister's counting the number of times that the young sister has disobeyed. And you can see her clinging, holding her ears. And you can see her temple, so stretched, temples just above your eyes and your forehead. That's a clear sign of a depressed person and a stressed person. So you know what happens? Those who are doing physics, when you pile pressure on matter, it'll break. Applied pressure results in excessive expansion and explosion. And if we remain in this space, this is exactly what happens. Sibling rivalry, family feuds, two sisters, fighting over maybe house chores, who are supposed to do the cooking, the dishes, the ironing, the laundry, fighting for success, academic success, family success, recognition. All those things can cause depression. Mom and dad's favorite, parental favorites, chosen because of special skills, academic excellence, moral behavior, personality and attitudes, age. These are the reasons why they are favorites. Parents, you don't need to have any favorites, but I'm just allowing you space to understand why there are so, so, so many favorites that can go on, reasons why. And you can see that the attention is, is that, it's as if so much exaggerated about mom and dad would attend to one sibling over my concerns. When I tell them about school, no one is concerned. When I tell them about my health, no one is concerned. When I tell them about my worries, no one is concerned. When I tell them about my joys, no one is concerned. When I say, uh, when I bring an issue, even a table, no one is concerned. So what causes depressions in young ladies at Dominican convent is stress. Could be academic stress. Can't coping, can't, be, can't cope with the subject that you're doing can't understand the concepts. And sometimes when you see your friends succeeding in the concepts and passing and you're failing, cause depression. Loss of a, fa of a family member, loss of a loved one causes depression. Major disappointment, heartbreaks. Major disappointment being betrayed by a friend causes depression. Chemical imbalances, hormonal imbalances, Genetic dispositions, dispositions, sorry, dispositions that come from even the family tree of a genetic depressed family. Narcotics, steroids, to excel in sport or to suppress hormones. Narcotics, that's Guka Makafela. You can even put in Daha. They may trigger, is a word, they may trigger depression. They'll make you realize how, unval how less valuable you are and worthlessness. Traumatic events. Maybe you fought school or you experienced violence at home. Maybe sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, parental abuse, neglect, you neglected. No one cares about you. And you have social problems at church, in your neighborhood, 
in your family tree well, and resolve family conflict. Bouts of fights with cousins, uncles, aunts, grandparents, siblings, all these things and many more can cause depression. So what do we do about this? Okay, how do we get treated? How do I get treated? Psychotherapy. The school has a therapist, um, a psychologist. Please visit the psychologist. It's healthy. Talk to them. Talk to them. They are professionals who help you. If a family, an uncle, an aunt, a family friend, go to them, talk to them, share your sentiments, your problems. Be careful, hospitalization, you know, we, we say we don't want, ah, you know, I know hospital, ah, gee, ah, yeah, something's wrong. We, we always, our tendency in Africa, especially in Zimbabwe, we think that when someone has been hospitalized for mental issues, akuto benga, no. A stitch in time saves nine. Self-help strategies is traveling. Let me visit this page, which uh, explains that part manual. Traveling, visit a friend, visit an uncle. Traveling really does help to take things out of your mind. It's a positive way. Visiting a doctor, taking good, vitamins, taking fruits, using antidepressants. We, we, we say, why is he taking antidepressants? We need that. Don't laugh at anyone. Don't stigmatize. Sleeping on eight hours is very healthy. And sleep, sleep, sleep. I beg you, please sleep. Rest. I know you get exams. But you need your rest. Mind engaging activities that soothes your mind like yoga. Positive thinking, engage yourself in positive thinking. Have a positive outlook. Be creative, start painting, start drawing. Even if you don't, even if you suck, even if you don't know how to do it, just do it. The creativity channels your mind, goes into various corridors within your brain. Listen to good music, I listen. When I'm stressed or even depressed, I should I should say I get depressed too. I listen to Thomas Mokfumuchi Moringa music, does it for me. I listen to a house music, Kabza. I listen to Black Coffee. Real deep house music. I like driving, so I travel a lot. Schedule your day. Don't be a haphazard person. Schedule your day. I want to wake up, I do this, I do that. You may not be able to do it, but when you're scheduled, you've got a program, you're orderly. Communicate, talk, talk with friends, talk, 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 talk with people. Bath. Just yesterday, I was watching um, Vikings. Yeah, I love watching series. They, they are quite soothing as well. Ragnar, how does this, does this fellow sometimes, but he looks kind of stressed because really, if I, you've seen him clean and smart, he's a Viking, I know, but hey, some characters within him, like Lagatha, his wife, she's bad. Beyond the sun is bad, but Ragnar doesn't look like someone strikes me that bothers. So with all those things that we have shared, be mindful, the causes, take care of yourself. You are the most valuable person and not anyone else. Learn to say no to situations that make you behave in ways that are inappropriate. Find a family friend who can intervene. Find ways and channels to speak about this. Talk to someone about physical abuse at home. Try to find ways that you can bridge the gap and relate with your mom. It's a very important relationship. Whenever you feel like you're lonely, thank God social media, talk to friends, go on WhatsApp. Don't go in the group, it's very general. Find someone that you can personally pour out to. 
You don't deserve to be alone. There are over 8 billion people in the world who need for you to be alone. Find ways that you can speak to your siblings. There is no competition in this world. People are gifted differently. Your gifts will shine one day. Speak about how you are failing to cope with home favoritism. Continue to speak about it. I sure hope that we overcome. That's the end of my session at this particular moment. So I just want you to understand that these situations that we go through, these are situations that we suffer. All of us, we, we go through them. We suffer with all of us. No one is exempted. You can be depressed for about a week, a couple of days. You can be depressed for a particular uh, moment in time. So you need to know, you need to understand that you're going through this and you need to seek appropriate assistance. Thank you so much. I will uh, meet you in the next, uh, I think at 10.30, and we start our next talk. You can write down what we have shared. You can uh, talk to somebody. You can reflect upon it. Then in the next couple of minutes, we start again. 10.30, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shidainzi. Thank you, Father. I will meet you in the next 15 minutes or so.
Welcome once again. Are we all here? Are we all ready? Yes. We are here, Father. I do hope that these um, uh, discussions are helpful and they're helping us to develop and also to see how best we can be mindful of environments that we live in and also to live a better, a better life as a better person. So we go. I don't think I have a host rights. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chidayans, so when I when I start sharing, will you be able to have the rights to admit people in? Yes, Father. Once once your screen is up, I'll start sharing. Okay, thank you. So you see what we are going through as young ladies and those who are aspiring to just become better people and, and grow up positively in our, in our lives. Well, this is not the one that we need. We've oh, gone past this part. Difficult in making the right relationships with friends. It's not a secret that we are at an age where we biologically and psychologically start to appreciate, to notice the other uh, gender and also want to talk to the other gender. That it is always a challenge. How do we relate? How do we talk to them? How do I behave? How much is, is too much and how much is too little. And we may find ourselves in a situation where no one is advising us or telling us or sharing with us the situation on the ground and what we ought to do. Perhaps maybe the parents that we are staying with are too busy or too old or too out of touch or out in sync with what we are going through. So we want to find out how can we create positive relationships, with friends. So in this talk, we are going to focus on two types of friends. Friends that I learn with, I study with, I live with, and friends of the other gender that can be deemed in quotes that we say boyfriend, those who would want to phrase it in that way. They are my friends. Hanging out, taking selfies, taking pictures. We're trying to look at a positive way of how we can hang out and a good way that we can spend quality, good time, happy time, joyful time. And we have these moments too. We stated them earlier on, heartbreaks, bad moments. Our hearts prepared for these moments. Because sometimes when we're involved in a relationship, we think that this is the Alpha and Omega. But it's not it. In time, it could be a two month relationship, a four month relationship, a whole year relationship, a two year relationship. It will come to an end. Now, we need to prepare our minds with that. And also to find how best we can, we can be in a relationship a plutonic relationship. Sometimes we shout at one another. It's not the end of the world. Friends do fight, but you always seek an amicable path to bridge the gap. And these things happen. 
And we also hope that they're also happening in your life or your friend's life. Or you know someone of your age who's going through it. So this is happening within your sphere. Going out for a milkshake, or even for ice cream, or even for pizza. Positive spaces that help you to grow. Positive spaces that help you to mature. Positive relationships. You're learning at a girl's school. You befriend someone from your brother's school, St. George's or St. John's, or from Peter House or from Hellenic, from anyway. What's your objective? We never speak about that objective. What are you striving to attain? Is it just, in this we say later, you know, I'm only handling peer pressure. Is it just, I just, for the just? Are you finding someone who can help you in school? Are you finding someone who can help you in your social life? Balancing. You've got a sister, you've got a young, your, your sisters and your mother, and you feel like you're in a space of just so many, just, it's too feminine. Learn and educated by nuns, learn with girls, stay with your uh, feminine uh, family. And so you, you need that other friendship, relationship, helps you to balance. Because if you're not so sure about what you want, then you always do everything dangerously. Are you ashamed? Because I think part of the psychology that we fail to understand is, are you even ashamed to speak about a relationship? Are you even afraid to talk to a, to a boy? What are the causes of these fears? And Parents sometimes now need to loosen the, the screw a bit because you are living in what is called a globalized world. The environment prohibited them to publicly speak about this amongst or within the family space. So it's, it's something that is spoken to amongst friends. And you know, we have this timid way of approaching relationships. But you even find a 24 year old girl afraid to tell parents or friends that she's in a relationship. But you now need to change the narrative and say, yes, relationships are no it for RC. We're going to friends. Sometimes friends are there to be sisters. They help you, they strengthen you. And it's a Saturday, it's, 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 it's a holiday. I'm going to journey with this friendship in school and outside school. During school days and just during the holidays. Chill and talk and be with your girlfriends, your, your friends, your classmates. It's important, it's necessary. Because we're trying to put you out of the lonely space for a friendship picture, classmates, Saturday, gone to the park, gone to the movies, sisters. This is important, it makes you balance. There are some friendships that are actually stronger than family ties, much more close and tight with your friend. And your brother, your cousin. No, no doubt. You're close to them. They're blood. But this one from the one that I, I learned with, maybe you see, this girl's could have been no other since ECD and it's possible, you know, started to be since grade one. ECD grade one. We've been together. Now we're in upper six, lower six, we're still together. 
they, 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 these people become more like family. They come to your house for sleepovers. You go to your house for sleepovers. We're going to hang out as friends. Take a picture, take a selfie. Healthy, healthy vibes. It's possible, my dear children, to create a positive space where you hang out, you chill, you enjoy. There's no alcohol, there's no drugs. It's just pure happiness. If we don't pray and esteem and put this in our minds, we always think that it's impossible. And it's not a shame. Uh, don't want to do movie three, four. We went to the movies and we just four. We had fun. It's not Monday to Friday school. It's a weekend. It's not. Uh, uh, let me say January to early April. It's holidays. I saw a message. One of my um, friends was saying, "Today is the last day of the agriculture show, and there are fireworks, and fountain is going to be there, and." It's, it's, and, and it was, you know, a family group and one of my young cousins was discussing and saying this. And he said, look, he's young. He has to go there. We, we went there a couple of times. Things never changed there, trust me. But it's enjoyable for those who go. Go. Don't put and pin yourself in your house, in your room. You need your mind to navigate there. Now we go to this other part. Find friends at school who support you. So realize that in this talk, we're talking about also the support structure. And if you really get the bag, they are gossiping about her. It could be about school, it could be about what she's wearing, it could be about anything. And they're actually enjoying gossiping. And she knows that this is what's happening. It's as if she's just been eliminated from the circle. You don't need to be stressed about this. Who should I hang out with and so forth? No need. You can tell yourself that you're a positive vibe. You can. You can tell yourself that you can do this. You can. You can tell yourself that I'm a survivor. Yes, you can. I think no one can stop you and should stop you. People will talk about you, but you just have to be strong. And you learn this at a young age, at school, college, work. And you find that even at a girl's institution, this does happen a lot. It's very possible that this girl She's the one who introduced the other girls. She was the glue. And now this has happened. It happens. Where two unknown people meet because of you, they then cement their friendship beyond what you share with both of them. This does always happen. But I think you just need to be so resolute and strong and tell yourself that, look, I came, I saw, I conquered. Veni Vidi Vici, it doesn't matter. I've often said that, that we are eight billion in the world, you just lost two. There are a gazillion of other friends that you can make. And you want to join the camaraderie, but somehow socially have been excluded. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. So if you are with your friends from school, is it refreshing the soul? If you so want to have a boyfriend, are you perennially stressed because it should refresh the soul? When you got your peers, your friends from church, from home, 
Are they there for you? They're making it impossible for you. If it doesn't refresh the soul, trust me, leave it. This is what's in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 9. It's scriptural. A friend loves at all times. A boyfriend loves at all times. A genuine classmate loves at all times. Proverbs 17, verse 17. At all times. Through thick and thin. The friendship that David and Jonathan had. Deep friendship. In this biblical narrative to make it possible for you that it exists. I was say, Father, it doesn't exist. I've been prepared a couple of times. I don't trust anyone. You need to trust somebody. You can't trust anyone. Can we even trust you? They had a bond. Jonathan was King Saul's son. David had saved King Saul by killing Goliath. The two became so much of brothers than friends. So he said Jonathan went to the field that David was hiding in with his servant. He asked his servant to collect the arrows. He shot with his bow. He called out the secret signal so David knew he was still in danger. His father wanted to kill David. And because of the bond, I say sometimes that bond is just out of this world. But you get into also some other bonds. The girl in the middle does not. just are unnecessary. Can we feel to have this chill vibe in a park with my boyfriend or with my male friend or with him? Then you just chill, observe and talk. That one hour is important, it helps you. It creates emotions within you that help you to appreciate the other. Even go on, on a hike, a bike ride, mountain climbing, a walk, healthy activities. We are a bit limited in our initiatives with regards to what do we do with him? There's so much to do, so much platonic activities to engage in, fun too. You see, it's because our minds are so limited and because we live in a society of appealing to the parents, so I said, you need to loosen the screw. Where you need to lie to your mother that you're going to Janet's house but you're actually going to see John. You lie where they're going to drop you off. We've had cases like these, so I'm speaking from experience. And what does that mean? It means that we can't even explore other positive viable avenues that are exciting, which is going to Chinoy Caves and we're back. It's gone to Mtoa Shanga, we're back. It's gone to Mkwis Woodlands and we're back. It's gone to Lion and Park and we're back. We just drove around and and we're back. Positive ways. I'm not too sure why our parents don't trust us. Have we become so much of crooks that we're not reliable? There's the other side of friendship. Look at that eye, it's a devious eye. This is not fake, this is a fake hug. Crocodile tears for those. So we can also say a crocodile smile. Nothing genuine about it. And if friends like that, 
school at home, neighborhood, they argue, they don't mean it. The next picture will actually stun you. That one. You got you, you got him, you got you, but your friend can take him away from you. We got cases like this. I'm not speaking from avoid, I'm speaking from experience. You have seen such things like this. When you tell your girlfriend everything, so this is the reason why people say, I will never have friends. And you should never say you never have friends. Because it's not the general concept of friendship. It's just that particular, and then the word particular, friend. So you need to pray for friends, genuine friends, sisters who love you, but therefore you will die with you. Who support you, who admonish you, who counsel you, who tell you. Without any fear, your sister's got your back. Your sisters will love you. So you need to avoid bad friendships. And when I mean bad, I mean bad in every sense. Bad boyfriends, bad male friends, bad classmates, bad associates. Find a friend that builds you up. Now listen, find friends that strengthen you positive relationships that even when someone your mom your dad your uncle your brother your sister when they pass by they will emulate you friendships that build david would have long gone dead wouldn't have the songs and robin for jonathan actually tom uh, all of them took his composer song called manager jerry where he laments the loss of his very good friend he says Jackson Sads was his old time best friend. And Jack died, he composed a song for him. And he sings, Jerry Waka Shat. Now people moan when someone is dead. You hear those, our go goes, how they say it. What can you see, Andy Rinnega? Yes, Jerry Waka Kanganisa. So these are friendships that Oliver saying that if it were for Jordan be here, the time when he really sacrificed his life, he knew what was on the line. So you two need buddies. Buddies like a friend loves at all times, when you're poor, when you're rich, when you have, when you don't. When you mess up and when you make success, Friends are there, genuine friends. The end. So, my dear friends, I'm sure you can see that. The institution called friendship is not easy. There's so much backbiting, there's so much betrayal. A whole lot of things happen. But as they happen, the most important thing that I want you to understand and know is this, that you have a positive vibe around you. People will support and strengthen you. People who are there for you. People who, who watch over and love you genuinely. Find such people. In fact, pray for them. Pray for them. And when you do pray for them, they'll come your way. It's actually Christian, Catholic, Deeply Christian, to pray for your future husband. Pray for the day that you get married. Pray for the right person that you date. I'm saying that these are the elementary stages of 
a positive, balanced, emotional, erotic life that you will live. Why won't you start with prayer? Why won't you start with positivity? Why won't you start doing the right thing? Don't confuse dating with marriage. You're way too young to consider marriage. She's going to the movies and she's going to uh, 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 buy ice cream. Does not want you to think that John is your husband. No, he's your friend, period. This is why even if Chan is calling them boyfriends, just because the fact that they're males, perhaps maybe we can put in boyfriends, but just call them friends, your special friends. Be sincere, be honest, be genuine. Be loyal, be committed. The challenges of promiscuity that we're facing today, faithfulness is a product of people who never started with prayer, never had this kind of a talk, never had an opportunity to pray for things that will happen. Pray even for the day that you're going to, and go and dinner on tomorrow, pray about it today. Pray that we exchange positive vibes. I learn from him. He learns from me. This is how you can treat yourself like a queen and valuable and never see yourself worthlessness. That even when there's a breakup or you don't go into a heartbreak because it was all started with prayer and you're so mentally prepared for it. I do hope that you will take it into consideration and also be able to mature and grow through it. And I'm sure that God will guide you. Well, he has to. He's your father who art in heaven. And I am so positive that if you think it and pray for it, God will surely bless you. You see the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. See you at 11.30. Less than 30 minutes time, you can... Take a break and take a walk. You can write down what you want to write down. Uh, God will, will be with you and see you in 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you. Okay.
Good afternoon, second time, how are you? Hello, Father, how are you? And things, and how are you? I see that we are also being uh, beamed on, uh, on um, uh, uh, YouTube. Yes, Father, we are live on YouTube as well. Thank you so much. Um, uh, for now, for those who are on uh, Zoom, if there is anyone who wants to ask a question, maybe one or two from what we have shared before we progress into, the, into our last section. I'll allow a question or two. If, if none, you can type it on the chat platform. I uh, will look at it uh, and it will remain there. I'll address it as we progress. Well, unless if there's someone who's raising up their hand. If we have none. We don't have, and that's fine. We can progress now. Uh, my host writes. Okay, fine. Just one second. That's fine. Thank you so much. So we are now in the last part of our talk, handling pressure parental expectations, academic pressure, and peer pressure. This is the most complicated part in our talk, the final part, and we need to progress with it and see how it happens. So sometimes parents think that they don't give us any pressure. They think that, you know, by stating that this is what they want in terms of academic excellence, it, it is actually a big form of pressure that we sometimes fail to handle. So the biggest stress for students is parental pressure. We want you to be a doctor. You see, your father is a doctor, your mother is a lawyer, your car uncles are doctors, so everyone in his family is a doctor. We have to be a doctor. But we are gifted differently. Maybe the chap is good at swimming, basketball, soccer, and they find it's not about being number one. It's about finding happiness. We've got so many doctors and you father, you uncle, you're not number one but you're satisfied with what you're doing. I'm satisfied with the sport that I play. I'm satisfied with the subject that I have. I don't want to be a doctor. Maybe I want to be a marketer. So that parental pressure is exerted on us when we were young. Is it on us when we were young? Is this, they, they, they is parental helping when we're doing homework. We're given the exercises to do at home. Then there's parental pressure where a parent fails to see that their child is not academically, intellectually inclined. They are not, they are not slow. It's just not their cup of tea. I always give an example of a man called Moses Chunga. He's not the brightest when it came to the alphabets and algebra. But boy, he was a genius when he was on the soccer pitch. He was a physician when he was in a soccer pitch. He was an actual when he was in a soccer pitch. He was, he was Jordan on soccer pitch. He was Elon Musk on soccer pitch. There's, there's no one in Zim, maybe save for George Shire, who can compete 
with Moses. He's not even beaten Lord. But when you put him, when you give him mathematics, he, he, he sees stars. He sees stars. So sometimes, parents, if you're listening, sometimes we exit so much pressure without even understanding how our child is able to know, to perceive, and to work. And this then and it then goes also to what we we're saying earlier. It complicates the relationship between parents and children, mother and daughter. But she sees your child is lazy. No, they are not. You've tried everything. They even put in their effort. But that's not where their mind is. The mind is on the other side. It's in, it's in art. It's in creativity. It's in drawing. It's not in numbers. It's in art. And we've never done that mental assessment, which I'm sure is necessary. That you keep on assessing when they're going to grade one, when they're going soon after form, when going to form one, assess your children and see, even when, when writing form four, what are the possibilities that are there in life? You hear this, and you know, some parents say, I pay for fees, I pay for food, I pay for rent, I give you shelter. Then, how are you failing? I love this image, it's got a louder speaker. Which means that the words of the father, they are not being heard. I, I need a louder speaker to amplify my words. What's wrong with you? What's going on with you? And this is all what the student faces, exams, grades, and it affects the esteem, the relationship. Is the tuition paid? School needs to be done, student loan. Depression now, this is uni, my midterms, peer pressure, bullying, assignments. And you got a ton of all those things weighing on you. You know that your mom or your dad hasn't paid the full school fees. These things are weighing on you. The studies, the books are weighing on you. And you can't cope. Those are writing areas is starting next week, checkpoints starting on Monday, a few days. You can't cope. Your mind is at a fees at a block. It's like, I've had enough. I can't see it clearly. How do I get A's? How do I keep it above B minus? Those are adding A as the number of subjects that you did when you're in form four. Now you need to keep the momentum, momentum, but it's not the same anymore. Tired, COVID, depressed, stressed, discovering yourself, suffering death of a lost um, of a loved one. So, to parents. Don't criticize or be too harsh about academic performance. Support them. Don't compare your child with his or her peers. Look at your friends. And sometimes we're even afraid to take friends home because they excel. And so, so, so make sure the youngster is maintaining a normal routine. Cutting off from friends and family is a sign of depression. Seek psychiatric help or counseling for your child. Engage in conversations regularly. How are you? How are you doing? How's everything? Don't be the image behind the father who's holding a stick. So we have been just saying, there's a study done by Adelphi Psych Medicine Clinic that the pressure for high grades, the damage parents could be causing to kids. Yes, we all want high grades. But high grades, then what? We can sacrifice high grades for a poor, for a poor, a very warped moral life. And look at that youngster. He's strained, just being dropped at school. He's suffering. Pressure at home to be number one. When I was above the primary, there were two girls who cried. There was those tears of, I can't believe I'm number one. There's those tears to say, I can't believe that I'm no longer number one. 
Then there were those tears of saying, what am I going to say at home? Michael Jackson's father was an, a demanding father. In this case, not in academics, but in music, singing. He, he coached them, mentored them, Joseph Jackson. But look at what happened to his children. They're not the best in terms of social characters and behavior. We all need the prize in English, in maths, in content, in science, in physics. I'm saying content like, I, like I'm in primary school. In languages, French, Chana, tourism. We need that prize. Everyone needs the prize. The prize giving. But before I even speak about the parents to the students, I am even making an effort to attain one of these. These awards are given to people who excel morally in terms of behavior and dress code, in sport and in, in school, in class. Where are you to step up to get one of those? Let's park parental pressure. Just asking, where are you to attain one of those? A peer pressure amongst peers, amongst, amongst students. The images that are coming will shock you. Some may actually move closer, scandalize you, but we're learning. Here, take a beer. Take it, you won't die. Come on, it's just a sip. How do you ward away such pressure? Come on, just one sip. Here's a smoke, take a smoke, come on. You've coughed one, come on, come on. Nothing will happen to you. That's how you start. Get a cigarette. Look, I'm not against smoking, people who smoke. But I'm concerned about when do they start to smoke and how do they smoke? Don't be pressured into it. Don't adhere to it. That's how it starts. Persuasive language is key in peer pressure. They don't beat you. They don't, they don't, they, they just, somewhat force themselves into your lives. Ah, just once, come on, you know, nothing will happen to you. Royak and my sisters, you see, this is what happens in our lives, to our sisters, to our daughters, to our friends, to us. Just take a bit. Nothing will happen to you, just take a bit. And you can see that with the uniform, this is our school. Premises. Do we not see alcohol, drugs being brought and peddled in schools? Did we not just read and hear the ones happening to our brother's schools in George's? How do we then say this is unacceptable? Go for a party. Be very careful. Chills and parties are away. Most people start to drink and smoke. Seep, that's how it starts. Like a seep shit, ah, nothing. Or just one pool, ah, nothing, just one pool. And they even make you feel superior if you do it and somewhat inferior if you don't do it. And poor we defeated peer pressure because we are doing the Tagapusa. Are then consumed. Pills and drugs. Pills and portion. Yellow diamonds. Now she's knocked out. Look at that bottle. And it's always that when we drink in the first encounter, because we don't know, we think it's water. We want to finish the whole bottle. 
And Luke is going to take the picture. And what is he going to do? Circulate it. Friends on a drive, drinking beer. Most of you girls are privileged enough to drive, which is very good. It's a skill that needs to be acquired and used. But then let's not abuse it. To surround ourselves with friends. Bad influence. Sexual immorality. Just once. And the girl is reflecting, should I or should I not? Should I, should I not? Should I, you know? But baby, I love you. You know, just once. Prove to me that you love me. Sleep with me. That's the oppression. Look, you don't need to prove to anyone that you love them. You love them. You've said it. That's it. Or if you don't sleep with me, then I'm leaving you. Or I'm going to someone. Now you're trapped. And that's what's raising that girl's mind. She genuinely wants the boy, but the condition's being set now. And the dude is saying, why are we stopping? What, what's going on? What are you thinking about? I told you I love you, don't I? Let's brace ourselves for the next ones. Pregnancy tests. And your friends are giggling. They're not pregnant. They're going to their homes. Gone with their good lives, but you are stuck. This was not intended. Started here. Should I, should I not? Should I, should I not? This got us there. Not intended. Children are a blessing. But the time to make children, it's not there for our lives. There's there are things that we need to attain. He hasn't married. He's just a John that I know. And I'm dating my husband. Then they'll say this. Why didn't you use protection? And in your chills, in your places, your friends. The experiments are rampant. And there's always one who is adventurous, too, too, too clever. And parents who should be watchful of your children's friends. And you too should watch of your friends. Ends in pregnancy. Now the idea is we are going to school and they're going to school pregnant. Have you not seen girls who go to school pregnant? And believe me, this is not through the power of the Holy Spirit. Cannot interact, isolated. She's pregnant. Friends are moving about, enjoying their lives. And you're stuck. Adult content and pornography. There are so many links. And social media is very, extremely persuasive. It lands on your lap or in your palms. And it just comes millions and millions of links and groups. So we're pressured into it. We're not preparing, we're not, we're prepared about it. We're not, we didn't ask for it, but we are pressured into it. Why can't we just say, e, no, thanks, but no. Have the courage, the social stamina, the mental stamina to say no, nada, no. Because it comes, you just try it. I'm not saying smoke, I'm just saying try it. And once you start, you won't stop, you can't stop. Oh, I don't know if I should. It's okay, come on. Come on, let's indulge. You see, you're confused and he's opening words. It's okay. There is an assurance that I'm with you. 
I'll never hurt you. There is an assurance that what we are doing, many have done it. There is an assurance that what we want to do here is to have some fun, there's some assurance. So it's okay. I know you're not so sure. You don't know it, but it's okay, but come on. The second statement is a command. The second statement, come on. It's an instruction. The second statement is also a directive. The strength, the stamina, the will to say no. I say no. And I'll be very honest with you. No force, even the evil spirit, can penetrate when you say no. That's how you defeat peer pressure. Don't step on the fence. I think, I, should I say yes? But I know it's not right. Mm, I'm not too sure, maybe. Maybe I'll say yes. Be con sure when you leave your house, be sure. Because it is in these multiple choice boxes that you end up ticking yes, but you have ticked no. You can't be stern and say, nope, we're doing that. Your mind is split. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, it's still at 35%. No is dominating. But there's an option for maybe. So that yes is gaining. At the end of the day, that yes is now 70%. No is now 30. Choose no. That's how you overcome peer pressure. Choose no. Be bold to say no. Just say no. I, I personally was saved by saying, I would literally say, e, Shama, in an, I say no to peer pressure. I would say, mm, Jaman and Sudes was with us. Jaman and this Kulava and this Kuda, Sulava and Didi. That's how I would say it. I don't want. And no force can push you when you've said, I don't want. Because your no has so much power, you don't know. I'll go here. Your no has so much power. This girl is on yes, no, maybe. She's confused. And in your state of confusion, that's when the pressure multiplies. I just want poo. Ah, you won't die. Just one small. Come on. I just take a sip. Just one glass. I ah, you won't die. Come on. Ah, in fact, you're not scared. You're, you're, you're useless. And nobody wants to hear those words. Nobody wants to hear those words. Yes, no, maybe. Just say no. Vote no. It's not political. Vote no. Vote no. Protect your integrity. Protect your family. Protect your school. Protect your future. No secures you of a better, brighter future. Vote no to peer pressure. Just say no, that's the power word. Mm, I, I know, no. I emulate people who, when they are being pressured, they boldly say, I know. Say no. Finito. This is what I wanted to share with you. I do hope that these talks will help you, inspire you. Do you have, do you have any questions from all the three talks, any or one of the talks? Yes, I have a question. Yes, Nakai. So you said that um, like we shouldn't be thinking about um, getting married right now. But so what's, why exactly are we even considering dating if you're not supposed to view 
But, okay. but I can't hear you quite quite clearly, Nakai. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so I was saying, uh, you mentioned that um, we shouldn't be thinking about exactly getting married to the person we're dating. So are we not supposed to be dating with a certain um, future in mind with that person? A child who's doing grade one or grade two, ECD, they don't dream of writing grade seven examinations or grade six Cambridge examinations at the end of grade one or end of ACD. They don't. They are being taught how to hold the pen. They are being taught how to write their name. They are being taught how to say the alphabet. They are being taught how to pronounce I-A-E-O-U. They are being taught um, our concepts, rudimentary concepts. Their concepts are just being opened up to them. The whole thing is pinned on becoming a doctor, mind you. Not ending in ECD. That, I, I always laugh at an ECD teacher that, you know, you teach them how to write so well, but when they use all the skills, they write badly when they become doctors. So the whole thing is pinned on that, but we break it into ECD, grade seven, from four checkpoints, from four A-level university. It's broken like that. And it takes one important thing that I want you to understand, time, time, 20 plus years from ECD to become a doctor. Time. What are we talking about? You've met John You're in form four, form five, form six. John is not married to you. John is not your husband. But many a times when we're in a relationship, the, the mind fixes itself to husband because the other open relationship that you are exposed to is the relationship of people who are in, ma in marital space, namely your parents, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts. So you try to level it with way and match it and mirror it with what they have and what you're trying to achieve. I've got nothing against John, who you are seeing in form four, form five, form six, nothing against them. But as I said, these are ECD phases. If you so desire and wish to marry him, but this is not the time to think about it. Many a times we actually have headaches, stresses, BP, because as on Diramba, it was perhaps bound to happen and is not your husband. And we cannot progress. We have set a standard. We have built walls around our hearts because of that heartbreak for someone who was not to be my husband. Very few cases very few, minimal cases, do we experience and see high school sweethearts getting married. I'm a product of high school sweethearts. My mom and dad met at Domboshava uh, 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 visitation mission, Catholic mission. I'm a product of that. No, I mean, not all people. And if when they narrate their case, not all their friends had that opportunity. They met their wives or husbands sometime later. So I I'm not sure I've, 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 I've answered you, Nakai. I think you have. Press on if you want. I uh, see Galaxy M12. I want to show the name, but your hand has been raised. You can, you can ask. Is Galaxy M12 asking? I'm sure that's. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Ah, I just wanted to add to what Nakai uh, asked. Uh, you answered it very well, but I wanted to add on something. The idea of getting involved in relationships with boys at this stage in school is like learning the different aspects of A, B, C. Getting to know men, what makes them tick. 
in a friendly environment, like you said, plutonic relationships. How do you then get to know a husband if you have not interacted with boys? So the aim or the, the yeah, the aim of friendships at this point in time with boys is to help you interact with men in healthy relationships that are not limited by love, that are not limited by thinking he will marry me. Whether or not he marries you does not really matter. What's important right now is learning to relate in a healthy way with men. I'm done, Father. Thank you so much. I'm only seeing the name of the phone, but not the name of the individual per se. Hello? It's Mrs. Mangoma. Oh, thank you, Ms. Mangoma. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, I was in the name of the gadget. Thank you so much, Ms. Mangoma, for that um, contribution. And um, ladies, I cannot um, um, say it any further. She speaks from experience as a woman, as a mother, and she speaks from experience of uh, teaching so many, so many young ladies who pass through her hands so it's valid uh, information. Chelsea, if a friend who is suffering from depression, uh, what is the best thing to do? Number one, Chelsea, advise them to see the school counselor. Advise them to speak to someone. Second thing, as a friend, be check, out, check, out, check on them. Uh, call them. Uh, when you get to school, talk to them. Depression is not treated one day. It's a process. And, and, and advise them to seek the school counselor or even sister or school teacher, they should talk, what is going on? As a friend, you're the friend, tell them to explain in detail what they're going through. Sometimes um, it's through sharing what is going on that they can remove a big load that they have. And upon sharing, when they've shared with you, is when you can simply say through the wisdom that she shares friends, I think we need to visit I've, uh, uh, someone who knows I've had so many young ladies and parishioners would come to me representing their friends. Father, can you please talk to so-and-so? Uh, they're not going through uh, a good time. Uh, when I spoke to him or her, it's about family, it's about school and self, some, et cetera, et cetera. I would do that. And, and I, would, I, would, I, would, I would help the individual personally or direct them to uh, someone who's quite professional in the area that they're suffering with. So yes, Chelsea, journey with your friend. Don't leave your friend. They may show signs of they don't want to be with you. This is why we say that they have this isolation uh, mentality within them just to be a loner, but be with them, check on them. And when you do, don't go over them too. What's that running? What's that running? Uh-uh. Why won't you do this? Don't be tired to surround them with love and assistance. I'm seeing Cho Chowash's iPad. Um, morning, God. Uh, afternoon, Father. Afternoon. I just, want, I just wanted to ask, how since we now know the different types of depression better than, how do we now navigate a course that allows us to avoid being depressed? Because I know some people personally, I know that counselors and therapists are there for our advantage, but then how do we now but how do we help ourselves? Oh, thank you. I'll be very honest with you. The we cannot, if I've heard you correctly, apart from just going to counsel, how do we help ourselves? As an individual, it's impossible. The challenges you are facing mentally prohibits you to think that you are okay. There is also that danger to think you're okay and yet you're not. There is also that danger to think that you overcome and yet you will not. Secondly, as friends, there are self mechanisms that we can use in jogging, walking, traveling, yoga, swimming, etc., etc. But I would rather have these 
placed as remedies by a professional. The danger, Chaturashi, that we have is that we also come from a custom and a culture that does not support visiting or going for psychiatric assistance. And I'm being very positive to you. We need it now more than ever. And as much as we have pharmacies and general practitioners dotted across the town and suburbs and, and locations, we also need psychiatrists. Because what we're facing sometimes is not a physical issue. That's not where the bad lies in. It's in the mental issue, but it issues out in a bigger frame body, which is coming due to excessive eating, which is coming from depression. So to really say that we can assist ourselves, we can't. It's a, it's a long shot. We need one another. One's weakness is not my place to dance over and say, yeah, but one's weakness is my platform to pray for them, to help them so that they come out of that. I hope I've answered you. Yes, you have, thank you. Thank you so much. So if we have none, these three that have asked, thank you so much. Once again, thank you to Sister Kudzin Absentia. Thank you to the school administration. Thank you to um, Mr. Shidari Nzi who was helping and Tinashe with um, the technical expertise. Once again, Ms. Nakai for assisting in liturgy and for all those who have contributed uh, Mama Nguma and uh, Choto Washi. May God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Be blessed. Thank you. 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 God bless you.